what the Lord has for us this morning. And I've been excited to get, wait to get back to church and uh, preach. But I started out and had no singing this morning. I just started going straight into preaching. Uh, but nevertheless, we're going to have a few songs anyway to get you in the mood uh, to hear the Word of God. Amen. Amen. I hope you come to get something from God. I hope you just didn't show up just to have a place to go. But to come and to let Lord Jesus Christ come by your way. Feel you up, speak in your heart. You may leave here today saying it's been good to be in the house of the Lord. A special welcome to our guests here today. I'm glad you're here. I want you to make yourself at home. Let God come by and speak to you and do a work in your life this morning. Amen. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Let's open up this service asking the Lord to come by and do something special in your heart this morning. Will you pray with me? Father, God, we're grateful this morning for your love and kindness towards us. We're grateful this morning for mercy and grace. God, for the cross of Calvary and salvation, the blood of Jesus Christ. God, it gives us the hope and the courage that we feel in our hearts this morning. God, I pray, Lord, this morning for this service, Lord. May you have your way in everything that's said and done. May the song service, God, may it be worship. Lord, I pray, Lord, today, may people get in the mind of worship, Lord. For a little while, God, may we lay aside those things that trouble us so heavy. God, with those burdens and those troubles and cares, God, Lord, right now we can't do nothing about it. Well, we can take the next little while, God, Lord, and say, you know what? I'm just going to spend it with Jesus and enjoy the time I have here this morning. Have your way in every heart, and we're going to thank you and praise you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And amen. Let's hear from the choir.
And Christmas right. just ain't about his death, but it's also about his resurrection. Right. It is not just about a resurrection, but it's also about a heavenly city. Right. And uh, we see all of that in the story of Christmas. And, uh, and, uh, and I've I said this, that Jesus is all about Christmas, and Christmas is all about Jesus. Amen. But over time, what happens is, is over time, uh, you get told things. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. And just like any story, you can, uh, I, I told them in Sunday school this morning, I can start right here in the front row, and I can tell them a story. In the front row, you can tell the second row, the fourth row, the fifth row, by the time it comes back around over here, the story is going to be a little bit different. Yes, sir. Right. Maybe something taken away, maybe some attitude. But when it gets back over here, LJ's going to walk out, he's going to go tell the story he heard. Right. And from generation to generation, things happen and things are said that distorts the whole thing that gets our mind completely focused off of what it ought to be on. Amen. Which Christmas should be on, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You see, the Bible says in Colossians chapter number 2, this ain't got nothing to do with Christmas. This is our uh, text verse this morning to get your mind open to be able to hear what I got to say this morning. The Bible says in verse number 6 of chapter number 2 of Colossians, as ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in Him. Amen. Rooted and built up in Him, established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy, vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Father, may you have your way this morning. Lord, help us, God, to deliver it in a fashion that's going to be pleasing to you. Be a help, God, or to the people. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. amen. Just bear with me for a little bit for a few minutes by way of introduction. It was about 2,000 years ago, the evening of December the 25th. Right. Mary rides into Bethlehem on a donkey, urgently needing to deliver her baby. Although it's an emergency, all the innkeepers turned them away, so they delivered baby Jesus in the stable. The angels singing to the shepherds afterwards, they all joined three kings with camels in worshiping the quiet, newborn babe, Jesus. Anybody ever heard that story? Yeah. Have you heard that story? Yeah. About, about Mary riding to Bethlehem. On a donkey. Yes, sir. You ever been told that? You ever seen that in the Christmas plays and yeah. the dramas and read about she rode into a little old pregnant Mary rode into Bethlehem on a donkey? The Bible don't say nothing about that. The Bible don't tell you she rode in on a donkey. Come on. Now, could she rode in on a donkey? Yeah. Sure. She could have rode in on a donkey. She could have rode in on a camel. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Joseph could have carried her in on his back. That's right. There's many different avenues that she got into Bethlehem, but it don't change the fact she made the Bethlehem. Yes, sir. I said that to say this. There's a lot of things that you've been told over the years, that's been said to you over the years, that you've even seen and you've even practiced and you even felt like it was the right thing, but that don't mean it's right. Amen. If there's no biblical backup. Just like all the years. Now listen, I'm standing here as a guilty one this morning because I've learned some things in the last week and a half that I ain't never even thought about because I took man's word yeah. for something and it sounded good. Yeah. It fit right. Come on. Man, it sounded just, it was just yeah. powerful. Come on. To only find out that it was just man-made tradition. Yeah. Right. I missed out on a lot of joy. Amen. I missed out on a lot of blessings. Right. I call blessings. I mean, look beside me here. A Christmas tree in the sanctuary. Come on. There's Amen. a lot of churches today that would excommunicate the pastor. That's right. For yeah. putting a Christmas tree in the sanctuary. Yeah. Right. And on top of all of that, he's got gifts spread out around the bottom of it. And he's even got the lights on. But listen. The problem is, the story could be entirely wrong right? Right. Yeah. for what you believe or what you've been told. Right. Right. Amen. I mean, let's talk about this morning. I told you last week we are going to talk about the Christmas tree. I mean, the pagan idol symbol. Yeah, come on. This thing that stands to my left, your right, this paganism thing over here that people bow down and worship the Christmas tree. Do I have anybody in the building that has a Christmas tree in their, in their, uh, in their house year-round? <laughs> 
David told me about it the other night. But he did tell me that you asked him a few weeks ago to take the tree down. He told you he wasn't going to take it down because it's too close to Christmas. What's the use of taking it down now? <laughs> Excluding her. You keep yours up decorated. Who'd you point to? Oh, you get... Well, let me ask this question. So we got, we got one that keeps it up year round. We got one that keeps it up for a long time. And we got the rest of y'all just puts it up on Thanksgiving Day, takes it down the day after Christmas or January 1. And you know, you've got your tradition. It's got to go up on Thanksgiving right. Day or Santa Claus ain't coming to your house. Amen. Yeah. And you've got to take it down January 1 or you ain't going to get no money hey, through the breeze in the pork lawn and all the mud kind of things you're going to eat. So you've got to take it down. That's Come a traditional on. thing right there. But let me ask you this. How many of you have ever No, sir. No. 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 no, sir. Lord God in heaven. Nope. Anybody ever done that? No. So we have to agree that ain't none of us in here got a tree up at the house, a tree up in the church to do anything to do with worshiping right? God. This thing ain't got nothing to do with my friend, uh, 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 me being right with the Lord and nothing else. Right, amen. So we can let the paganism be the paganism they want to do. We can let the Druids do what they want to do. But this morning, we're going to do what the Bible says. It says, beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy of right. agency, after tradition of men, after rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. You can actually look at that tree and you see a Christmas tree. I don't see a Christmas tree. You look at those presents and you see presents. I don't see presents no more. Some people look at that tree, you know what they see? They see a waste of time. They see money that's thrown away. This is bad stewardship right there. I don't see it that way. I don't see it that way at all. And I hope when you leave here, you don't see it that way. But we got to talk about the Christmas tree. Where is the Christmas tree in the Bible? Come on. Well, the whole story starts in a tree lot. Yeah, right. Yeah. Amen. The whole Garden of Eden was full of trees. When God created this world, He filled it full of trees. This mud ball place called Earth ain't nothing but one great big tree lot. Right, amen. Just like the one across the street from Food Line in Indian Land. Just like the one that got wherever they, you know, all around this time they put all these little locks up and they got all these trees out there hanging up, uh, standing up. This whole world ain't nothing but a tree lot. That's right. That's right. And when God created the world and he made his whole world and put all these trees in there, God hung fruit on the trees. Say amen, somebody. Don't say amen. 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 I mean, where you pull an apple from? Come on, you're right. Where you pull a pear from? Yeah. Where you pull an orange from? Tree. Where's the grapefruit grow? Yeah. Where's the lemon grow? Tree. Right. Tree. So God pulled a hey, right, hey, great big tree lot, and He hung fruit hey, on the tree. Well, I don't know about you, but I see a red apple. I see a green apple. Yeah. I see a I see a red. Uh, I mean, a, a green pear. I see an orange. An orange. I see a lemon. I see all these different colors hanging on the tree that God decorated his trees right. with. He yeah. made his tree lot. Amen, amen, amen. Yeah. Like that, right. Amen. Come on. Go ahead. Amen. 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 But the story I'm talking about calls our attention to two special trees. Yeah. Come right. on. Come on. In the tree lot. Yeah. The first tree is the tree of good and evil. Right. And God says you better not eat yes, sir. That's right. of that tree. All right. There was some fruit hanging on that tree of good and evil. Yeah. Now there's all different kind of analogies of what fruit it was. The world says it's an apple. Well, I got different beliefs on that. You want to know what my right. belief is on it? Come see me. I ain't going to worry about it today. Right. But nevertheless, he said don't eat of that tree that I've decorated with fruit Amen. of the knowledge of good and evil. But you know what happened? Adam went, you know what he did? He partook of it. He ate of the fruit of the tree. And you know what happened when Adam ate of the fruit of the tree? God came and gave him a boot in the rear end and kicked him out of the garden. Right. God came on the through there and said, I told you not to eat the fruit of the tree. You ate the fruit of the tree. I'm just using blue analogy. He grabbed Adam up by 
the neck and the head right there. After he done made the sacrifice, after he done clothed him, he grabbed him by the seat of his pants. Then he swung him right out the, right. the garden over there. And he said, boy, you ain't never coming back in this garden again. Oh, he put some guards standing there at the gate oh. and said, hey, don't you ever let Adam back in this garden again. He's the messed up. He's the broken commandment. And now he is out. He's punished as a consequence yeah. of sin. And all this other kind of things. But what happened is, because Adam ate of that tree, Never ever made it to the next tree. Right. 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 Yeah. right. The tree of life. Yeah. Amen. And now mankind is suffering today because Adam ate Amen. Of that tree. Right. 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 Amen. And mankind had to wait for a long, long time oh. in order for that avenue to be opened back up right. to the tree of life. Oh. Not to the tree of good and evil, because we already know what good and evil is. We're born in this world knowing what good and evil is. Matter of fact, you're born in this world knowing more evil than you know good. A newborn baby is born in this world already knowing how to lie, to lie, hey. how to how pull the wool over mama's eyes and daddy's eyes. You ain't got to teach a six-month-old. You ain't got to teach a five-year-old. You ain't got to teach an eight-year-old how to lie and connive. That little girl already knows how to bat her eyelashes and daddy to get what she Wants. That little boy already knows how to jerk on the heartstrings of mama to get what she wants. He wants. They already know that. Why? Because it's in them. They were born in this world under a curse because a man took of a tree of the knowledge of good and evil and now we're living under that curse. But then something happened. Hey, somebody came along, opened up an avenue that we may get to that next tree. Amen. 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 Let's talk about the tree that's in your house. Come on. That you can't find in the Bible. Has anybody ever researched and tried to find a Christmas tree in the Bible? Nobody? Y'all better off than I thought you was. <laughs> God created the world and filled it with trees. And he hung the fruit like I've already told you. Amen. When God built his house, he brought trees inside the house. His house was fiscoed with images of trees all around. The lampstand in the tabernacle was an almond tree. Lights put on the lampstand. Yeah. Yeah. So you see, the early church had plenty of reason to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ Amen. on the Amen. 25th of December. And it has nothing to do with the winter solstice. Right. And last check, if I last check, they say, oh, Christmas is pagan and they do it because of the sun. I'm going to tell you about that here in a minute. And you know, and, and because of the darkest day and all these other kind of things. But last time I checked, it was God that created Amen. the solstice. Amen. Right. The last time I checked, it was God that created the sun and the moon. Yes, sir. Amen. The last time I checked, it was God that made this mud ball planet called yeah. Earth. The last time I checked, it was God that made Jupiter. It was God that yeah. made Pluto. It was God that made Mars. It was God that made Saturn. It was God that made all these planets and the ones that we know about and the ones we don't know about. Who knows how many's out there? I don't know. Really don't care. I don't know what I'm concerned about the one I'm living on. But it was God that made those and put them in orbit out there. It was God that made that great big universe out there. If God made all of that, why would we call it paganism? Yep. Mm. Check this out. I gotta read this so I don't mess it up. Why do many Christians celebrate Christians celebrate Christmas on the 25th day of December? Does anybody know? <laughs> Why was the 25th of December picked out? Listen. The date was chosen. I'm gonna say a word that in the average Baptist church, a lot of people think it's a bad word. Right. The date was chosen by the Roman Catholic Church. Amen. Well, that's automatic right there, man. That's the great order and everything else. You know, that's a bunch of religion. You can't go off of what the Roman Catholic did. Right. Like, no, that's what's wrong. That's what's so paganism about. Don't you know all the rituals and things that they do? And, and the hell Mary's they throw up. There's no way come they on, do anything right. right. But oh, wait a minute. Let's take it. Let's find out why. Let's yeah, find come on. Right. They did. Right. You see, the truth about it is, because Rome dominated most of the Christian world for centuries, the date became tradition throughout most of the world. It is. The original significance of December 25th is that it was a well-known festival day celebrating the annual return of the sun. Amen. Come on. 
Before December 25th was ever declared Come on. Christmas Day, the birth of Jesus, or the celebration of the birth of Jesus, hey, my friend, there was already festivals going on. There's already festivities going on. People was already celebrating the return of the sun. Right. Why? Because December 21st or 22nd, it fluctuates back and forth, I was informed. But we're going to go to the 21st. Hey, December 21st is what? The first day of winter, right? Is that what? Oh, yeah. December 21st yeah. is the first day of winter. It means the first day of winter oh, means this. It means it is the time of year when daylight is the shortest time span on planet Earth. The sun shines the least amount on the first day of winter. The solstice, if you please. And you know what that means? If the sun is shining the least amount, what does that mean? Come that on. means that's when darkness is about the most. Hey, my friend, on planet Earth. And you know what happened is the paganism and the druids and all these sun worshippers and the sun god worshippers and all these other kind of people on December 25th, it it would be very evident that on the 21st, when it was the shortest day, but on the 25th, it was very significant that it was true. They could actually see right. that the sun was beginning to shine longer than it had been on the 21st, which meant they were celebrating. The sun has returned. The light has yeah. returned back to planet Earth. And the Roman can't believe what you want to believe. I don't lie to all their doctrine, but they stood back and looked and said, man, this is a bunch of paganism. Man, this thing ain't right. They're worshiping the wrong God. We've got to plug something in here and we can't take something away if we don't add something back. And we can't be worshiping the sun God. So you know what they chose? It ain't a coincidence. God had it orchestrated right there, my friend. They chose that on December 25th to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ and the people took to it. And now we don't celebrate that my friend, the S-U-N is right. regarded, but we celebrate that the S-O-N Hey, think about it. December 25th, midwinter, when everything is sleeping, everything is dying, everything is cold, everything is dark, and we proclaim the turn of history. Hey, my friend, from darkness, hey, my friend, to light, hey, from death to life, from coldness to warmth. What other time of the year should we celebrate the birth of the man that brought you hope, the man that brought you salvation, the man that brought you grace, the man that brought you Mercy, the man Christ Jesus. Well, he wasn't born on December 25th, I know it. Come on. Right? Because you see, you won't find shepherds abiding in the field in the midst of winter. Right. Amen. Right. You want to really get technical and back it back up. You can about put it September when he was born. Amen. Somewhere along in there. They got different dates in September. I've heard September 29th. But somewhere along mid-September, where the history all winds up, the shepherds are abiding in the field. Right. It was a time of festivals going on in, in Bethlehem. That's why they was coming. All these other kind of things is going on. Go check it out. I'm not going to spend all the time doing it this morning. Oh, yeah. But if he was born in September, you go tell them that. You'll find out that it's human, <coughs> human, and we all know it. It takes nine months, right, in, for a baby to develop inside of that womb of that woman. Right. Well, last time I looked at my calendar, September's the eighth month. You got to back up one more month. So we ain't celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ. We're celebrating the conception. Oh, when the Holy One of Heaven, hey, my friend, was put into the womb of Virgin Mary when he took on the robe of flesh because a baby ain't a baby when it takes his first breath in my friend's delivery room. A baby's a baby at the time of conception. Hey, my friend, when it takes on the robe of flesh and you can back her up so we have to celebrate the birth. We're celebrating the conception. What other great thing you want to celebrate? When God, the Creator, my friend, took on the materialistic form. And I said materialistic form of flesh and came into this world Boy, to save sinners. Amen. Listen to me. I'm taking you to the tree. <coughs> Think about it. So you know what I say this morning? Take that paganism stuff and rent it somewhere. Amen. Yeah. Right. 
You know what I say? That religious crowd sits on the pews and says that's a sacrilegious thing. Take the sacrilegious self up the road, down the road, across the road, wherever you want to go. Because you see, there ain't nothing sacrilegious about that tree. Amen. There ain't nothing sacrilegious Amen. about celebrating Christmas. There ain't nothing sacrilegious about jingle bells, jingle bells. Amen. There ain't nothing sacrilegious about joy to the world. The Lord has come. There ain't nothing sacrilegious about all these things. There ain't nothing sacrilegious about that right there. You know, there ain't nothing, there ain't nothing paganism about that thing right there. You see a Christmas tree, but here in a few minutes, they were singing a song a while ago. I'm telling you, hang with me. They were singing that song a while ago. Thank God I'm free. Yeah. I didn't look up at a Christmas tree. I'll tell you what I looked at here in a few minutes. Listen to me. Let's go back to the story of Adam. Let's go back into God's tree lot. Let's go back into that place where God has decorated trees with fruit where he's put Adam, where he told Adam not to eat of the tree. Let's go back to that and we'll find that Adam came and he came into the garden and one day they're trimming the trees and you know the story Satan comes up and he talks to Eve and Eve goes over and she talks to Adam and both of them look at it and it takes them off the thing and they eat. Yeah. All right. Well, the reason God said don't take that because it didn't belong to Adam. Right. Amen. It didn't belong to Adam. It belonged to who? God. God. Adam went over there and he took something off the tree. That did not belong to him. Yeah. What's that called? Stealing. 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 Yeah. He took something that did not belong to him. Well, you know what? If I'm walking around the church, come on. And you know what? And, and, and I got. I'm gonna use LJ's illustration. I don't think LJ's guilty, but it, you know his captains will tell me in a minute whenever I look at him, I make this illustration. <laughs> if I walk around, I used to keep a box over there full of candy until we started having ant problems and all that, and I quit doing it over there. That's why I don't have candy here no more because I got tired of killing ants all the time. I mean, had just been around the church. Uh, so that's why I'm, I got rid of candy. But nevertheless, I've caught kids going over there before, sticking their hands in the bucket and taking a piece of candy out. You know, that, that candy didn't belong to them. That candy belonged to me. Right. That was my yeah. bucket, my candy. I bought it, and I will freely give it out to who I gave it out to. Now listen, if I'm a preacher with my bucket, with my candy, and I catch a kid sticking his hand in it and taking the candy out, right? he's stealing. But what's the preacher you think going to say to him? What? Put it back. I hear you. Put it back. Put it back. Put it back. Put it back, boy. Girl. Mama, daddy. Whoever still. Put it back. Right. Well, Adam took. Yeah. It ate. Right. He did put it back. And now he can't put it back. Right. Amen. Right. 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 There's no way Adam can put back what he stole from yeah. God. Back on the tree. So now he's a thief. Come on, preacher. A stealer. Yeah. Same thing. A robber, however you want to call it. Broke, broke, he broke the command before the commandments ever wrote. He can't put back on the tree. When he can't put back on the tree, because now it's on the inside of him. He gets kicked out of the garden. And now he can't go. Now you picture this. We don't ever talk about this kind of stuff. Maybe my imagination is too, too, too out there. But I wonder how many times that Adam would walk by that gate he got thrown out of. On. I wonder how many times he could look over there, man, and see that tree over there with that fruit hanging on with knowledge of good and evil, and say, man, I wish to God I never took back from that Amen. tree. Amen. I wish to God I never took that fruit. I wish to God I never ate that fruit. I wish I'd listened to God. If I had that, I wonder how many times Adam was out there, my friend, laboring in the garden, hey, my friend, hoeing, hanging in the shoveling, and doing all that plucking weeds. I wonder how many times he stopped because his back is starting to ache from being bent over. He didn't stand up and stretch himself and bend around and wipe the sweat of his brow. He didn't look over there and see the treetops of God's garden yeah. and say, man, it, it wasn't always this way right now. I wonder, my friend, that day when that little woman hey, was in that tent and she's in there out there screaming and hollering and travailing right. and at the point of death and I was standing outside the tent knowing that his little wife is about to break in and hey, a precious child in this world. And he looks back over there at the garden and says, man, if I would have took in the tree, man, if I had did what I done, if I had stole from God, she right. would be in the tent right now going through the pain and the agony that she's going through. I wish to God I could go back and do something to fix this. I wish I could take back and put back what I stole from God. I wish to God it wasn't like this. I wish to God my boys wouldn't have to suffer the way I wish to God there were no thorns on the roses. I wish to God 
it took back right. Preach now. what didn't belong to me. That's right. Amen. And because that first Adam took. Yeah. Because that first Adam went to God's tree that God decorated. That God planted. That God had grown. And because Adam went and he took of it and he ate of it and he put it in there. You and I are sitting where we're sitting at today in a sin first world. You and I are suffering what we suffer today because of a thing. You and I are carrying the birds that we're carrying because of a thing. You and I are, hey ladies, you're travailing. Don't get mad at your husband. Don't get mad and say, I ought to kill you. I should have never slept with you when you're bringing that baby yet. If you want to get mad at somebody, get mad at the man. The because it was the first Adam that stole and put us in the shape that we're in this morning. Yeah, Amen. The right. first Adam. Amen. Oh, I'm going to tell you something this morning. Remember, I told you God had a tree lot. I told you God decorated the tree. I told you that the first Adam, man, he stole from that tree. He couldn't give back, my friend. He couldn't put it back on the tree. He couldn't give it back to God because of that. We're in the sin cursed world that we're in. But can I tell you this morning, there is another tree, my friend. There is another tree. But there just ain't another tree. There's another Adam. There's a second Adam, my friend. Hey, my friend, that came in this world. There's a second Adam. Hey, my friend, that God sent. There's a second Adam. Hey, my friend, there's another tree. But there was another Adam that says, hey, I can give it back to God. I can put the fruit back on the tree. There's another Adam, my friend, that can take your sin and take my sin. There's another Adam that had another tree. Yes, amen. 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 The second Adam. Right. What the first Adam could not do, the second Adam did. Amen. The first Adam, all he wanted to. Oh, I know if I could take the pain from the heat. Oh, if I could take the agony from my children. Oh, if I could get the sweat from my brow. Oh, if I could get rid of my back hair. Oh, if I didn't have the troubles and the trials and the burdens and the cares. Oh, if I could just get back. Oh, if I could just put back on the tree. Then it would live in that home, man. But Adam says, I can't. And God says, that's right, you can't. But some time passed by. And there was a man by the name of Christ Jesus. Right. Back on the tree, making us right with God. Right, amen. God blessed the fruit that hung on his blessed tree. Jesus was put on a tree. The fruit stole by the first Adam was put back on the tree. And the second Adam hung on a wooden cross. Jesus hung. He was giving back what Adam took. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus said, Father, I love them. Amen. Father, I created them for my for our fellowship. Father, I know that Adam stole from you. Father, I know how you feel about these. Father, I know he could never repay restitution and give back what he stole from you. But Father, I want to put myself on the tree. Amen. I want to put back. Yeah. I want to put back what Adam stole. Yes. So I'm going to put back the fruit if you accept my fruit for Adam's.
transgression. Right, amen. And God says, I'm just using my, and God says, wash for the, but Jesus is, because Lord, years ago, whenever Adam stole from you, there was another tree. There's another tree that needed to take of. Yeah, come on. Yeah. And because Adam stole from you, there's a whole mankind has no avenue. They can't get to that tree. And the only way that we're going to be able to spend eternity together, Father, is that they have avenue access to that tree of life. Yeah. And God says, okay, son. And Jesus says, Father, I'll be right back. Because in heaven there is no time. Right. And Jesus stands up. He takes off his royalty. Amen. Here, I'll leave it right here beside you, Daddy. Because I'm coming back. Yeah. Amen. This is my right. I'll be right back, Father. And he leaves heaven. Yeah. In the latter part of the year, on planet Earth in time, when it was the coldest, when it was the darkest, when nothing is living and everything is dead. Right. God incarnated himself in the form of flesh. Right. Where our government was made flesh and dwelt among us. Yes. Yeah. And he landed himself in the womb of a little girl by the name of Mary. Yeah. He said, we're long about that time of the year. He was conceived. And about nine months later, my friend, he was born into this world. And a couple months later, years down the road, somebody stood up and says, hey, we need to recognize that Jesus was born. And you know what they need now? We celebrate Christmas, the birth of the second man, the man that hung himself on a tree, the man that took your place, the man that bore your sin, the man that took your sorrow, took your guilt, took your Put himself on a true fire because you should have been crucified. You should pay for your sins. You should get the wrath of God. You should suffer. You should be put in hell. You should suffer death. But Jesus, the second Adam, says, No, no, no. I'll get back. I'll put myself on a tree. Amen. May live. Listen, he paid the price. He took the curse. He reconciled us to God. Back to God. He is the light of the world. The question is today, oh yes, you see a Christmas tree, but I know every time I ride by the Christmas line, I see a tree that will never, ever be made into a cross. Why? Because Jesus already put himself back on the tree. What I see is not a Christmas tree. It's a cross that will never have nobody hung on. Why? Because the second Adam is already suffering. Right. The crucifixion. Let's all stand every head bowed, every eye closed. Nobody looking around, please. Let me ask you this morning. The second Adam. Do you know this man, Jesus? Christmas. Is it just about the festivities? Is it just about, is it just about that man? Is it just about the Santa Claus? And is it just about the lights and the decorations and, the, and walking through the mall and buying all the gifts? Or is it about that second Adam? I wonder why his about eyes are closed. This tree I'm standing beside this morning. If the second Adam had to put himself on a tree, I wonder whose cross right. this tree would be. Amen. Friend, religion is something that'll damn you. Yep. Jesus is a man that'll save you. Amen. We're going to do a song of invitation at this time. Look at me. Here. Is a cross that will never be born. Here's a man yeah. 
and put himself on a tree. And now he's no longer hanging on a tree. That's right. Amen. Amen. But he's all free. <coughs> Access to the tree of life. Yes. Eternal life. Yes. The fruit put back on the tree. And God says, well done. Yeah. I accept Amen. that fruit. And now, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord yes, sir. shall be saved. Amen. Amen. You want to save a tree? Accept Jesus. They're going to sing a song here this morning. You've never accepted Amen. Christ. This is your day. Amen. Today's a salvation. Amen. Jesus died. And now he's simply saying, Come. Yes, broken. Mine was me. He became sin. Now I am free. He became me. Now I'm free. The cross he carried for my burden. My burdens. The nails that held him set me free.
Oh, I'd like to thank the bowels of God. I thank you for bearing my cross. Yes, amen. Yes, Lord. I thank you for bearing that cross. Yeah. But then the question arises, well, what about all the gifts? Mm. All the materialistic things. Mm. I want you to look at those gifts there. What do you see? Yeah. Tell me. Those gifts. Gifts. Yeah. Boxes. Yeah. Bright colors. Wasting money. Yep. Maybe. Right. I don't know. Depends on what's in the box. Right. Go buy me a gift. No, they didn't give it to me. Not the terms. It's a waste of money. If <laughs> it's something I always wanted, it ain't a waste of money. Right. right. If it's something I already got, it's a waste of money. Yep. Just kidding. Well, look at that. Now, you got to put you in mind. This is, this is spiritual applications. You understand that, right? Amen. Right. You understand I'm not making a doctrine that every Christmas tree was the cross of Calvary. Right. I'm giving you a spiritual application this morning. Right. When you look at the tree, it's not a paganistic faith. It's a tree that will never be made to a cross for anybody to have to suffer. Why? Because it's already gave back. Amen. And now we are accepted. Now, let me give you another thing to look at. Suppose there was poster board. All back here. You got it? Yeah. All right, let's put some more back here. Okay? Now I'm going to outline the gifts. Okay? You got it? Yeah. You got your mind. Here we go. I'm going to outline. I'm outlining the gifts all the way around. Yeah. See that? Yes, sir. The tall gifts, medium gifts, mid side gifts. Little gifts. You got that? Yes. Yeah. All right, so there's my post board. I got it all out of there. I'm not going to do it for the sake of tearing up stuff because that stuff, most of that don't belong to me. It was long to me, okay? So now I got the post board up there and the trees behind it, okay? Yeah. And I'm going to wipe off all the gifts. They're gone. That's right. And I got an outline of something there. Mm -hmm. Know what it's an outline of? Yeah. What was that? A skyline. Yeah. A celestial city. Yeah. If you're on your way yeah. to Charlotte right now, you'll see the big tall buildings. Yeah. This built. Right there, right now. You see it? You see the big tall skyscraper buildings? Yes, sir. You see the little buildings? And you put it anytime you watch TV, NFL, NBA, they'll always show you the skyline yeah. way off in the, of the big tall buildings. So now, what you're looking at is you're not just looking at a cross, but you're looking at a tree of life standing right smack dead in the middle yeah. of a celestial city right. that we ain't seen yet. Yeah. But one day, yeah. we're going to see that heavenly yeah. city, my friend. Oh, I see the celestial city, my heavenly home. Then one day I'm going to buy it and go around the streets of God. But right smack dead in the middle of that city is a tree of life that enables us to be a part of the celestial city. Amen. Amen. Now, what's the point of all of this? You see that? On the tree of life, we got a green light, we got a red light. We got a yellow light. We got a blue light. We got a green light there, a blue light there. They're all gonna come to lights everywhere. This is all my blueology right here. You know what the lights is representing? That it don't matter if you red, yellow, black, or white. It don't make no difference because the cross of Calvary paid the sin debt for all of mankind. And in that heavenly, so I shall see it. Much materialism. Yeah, come on. Yeah. Well, Christ. Christ. Yeah. Took on materialism come on. to give the greatest yeah. gift. Amen. 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 I don't believe. I don't believe in buying kids gifts when they're weak as a devil all year long. They don't deserve it. 
They're a bunch of rebellious, stubborn kids. They don't clean the room. They don't carry out the garbage. They back talk. I ain't buying you nothing Amen. for Christmas. Oh, can I tell you? I'm all preacher. You rebellious, stubborn, hard-headed individual. Always living your life to please yourself. Amen. It's all yeah. about you. Amen. You don't deserve grace. You don't deserve Amen. mercy. Amen. But God wrapped himself up and put himself in the face of a tree. He oh. says, you know what? You don't deserve it. But I still love you. You don't deserve it. But I'll still give it to you. I'm talking about it ain't about pain. It's about It's about salvation. Took it. That's right. Bore it. Suffered it. Yep. Gave it. Amen. I may enjoy it. Amen. So you can say happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Come on. However you want to say it. Don't get bless God caught up in Starbucks uh, red cups. Right. Don't get caught up in happy holidays or Merry Christmas. But get caught up in this all about Jesus. Amen. Amen. Don't worry about a red cup. You know what I see when I see nothing? I'm glad Starbucks didn't put nothing on a red cup. Because you see, when I see a red cup now, I see nothing but the blood of Jesus. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey. When you get the blood, hey, the blood of Jesus, that's how it takes to wash the way you see it. You get the blood of Jesus, that's how it takes to get the forgiveness of God. You don't need Jesus plus baptism. You don't need the blood plus works. The blood plus the church. All you need is the blood. So Starbucks did us a favor to a bunch of God haters. Amen. That's right. Amen. I'm trying to say this morning. You got to look at it. That's right. You can find Jesus. Amen. Hey, that nice That's right. December 21st. I've done preaching. I didn't give God. I didn't give the invitation. I'm just going on now. <laughs> Come on. December 21st. It's the soft. First day of winter, short day of year. Then you have December 22nd. December 23rd. December 24th. Mm -hmm. December 22nd, December 23rd, December 24th. That's right. Few more guys. Yeah, come on. December 22nd. Right. right. December 23rd. Yeah. December 24th. Let me say it one more time. December 22nd, one day. December 23rd, two days. December 24th, three days. Amen. December 24th. Come on. You know why you're so excited about Christmas Day? That morning you wake up, you're in there because you're getting some greatest things you always wanted just for this year, right? <laughs> and you're hoping you find everything you've been looking for. Right? Yeah, come on. And you go to bed that night anticipating. You can't go to sleep on Christmas Eve, can you? Hey. You can't come wait. On. Santa Claus, Satan, Nick, Daddy, Mom, whoever, you know, the preacher, who, and you get gifts from everywhere, don't you? You're a spoiled little 